Welcome back everyone to another Downward Day. And today I'm coming at you with a bit of a quick video here discussing a hassle I had to deal with this week. And man, I feel like such a boomer for saying this. It's not really supposed to happen to people my age, but this week I was tricked into downloading malware onto my computer. I know, I know. Get all the laughs out of the way. Yes. Very dumb. How can you fall for malware as a internet using 24 year old adult in 2022? It doesn't make any sense, okay? They're so obvious. You just avoid the email. Don't download stuff to your computer from unknown sender. And before this incident happened, I would have been one to proudly boast about knowing what to look out for in terms of suspicious content to not download to your hard drive and open. But hey, in my defense here, it was almost the perfect storm of events that did, at the end of the day, end up fooling me into clicking on the malware. Circumstantially, it worked out where I ended up being the big sucker of the day. So I just wanted to make this video to warn others out there of this scam that's floating around and just how convincing it can be if you're not exactly thinking clearly in the moment. So what this scam actually does is disguise itself as a YouTube copyright notification. But unlike the standard procedure where YouTube sends you an email, this notification instead is distributed through a shared folder on Google Drive. Now already with how this scam is administered, there are two points where you could call BS. Number one is if you have a YouTube channel where you're at no risk to copyright claims, so it doesn't make sense that you would get one. And number two, of course, is that YouTube, at least how the system is presently administered, they won't send you a copyright notification through Google Drive. As I just stated, they'll send you the notification through email. So how did I end up falling for the scam at this point? Well, number one, I'm no stranger to copyright issues on YouTube. I deal with many, many issues per year. Based on the nature of my work and how I put videos together, I sort of straddle the fine line between what's safe and unsafe in terms of copyright, so I'm used to it. I'm used to dealing with all sorts of copyright problems, and that's sort of why this specific incident didn't strike me as out of the ordinary. It was a supposed copyright dispute on my newest video, which of course has music and movie footage and TV footage in it, so it was plausible to me that something could have gone wrong with this video in the copyright department. And as for the copyright notice being shared through Google Drive, which admittedly was something I'd never seen before, I understand that I probably should have been a lot more skeptical. But in my defense, YouTube systems with how they administer their protocol with the site operations, it's always changing. They're always trying new things, testing out these new experimental methods and ways to police the platform. I just assumed that this was a new YouTube protocol, so... For the time being, I went along with it. So one aspect that made the scam a bit more convincing is that on Google Drive, it displays as a PDF file. And the scammers try to frame the whole situation as this ongoing copyright dispute that requires your input to resolve. The warning they send you has this line on it that stipulates if you don't respond in a certain amount of time, then YouTube will take down your video and administer a strike to your account. In hindsight, of course, it's the common technique scammers use to institute this false sense of urgency as sort of a persuasive measure to get you to act on it immediately without thinking. And at this point, I was still under the impression that this was a legitimate copyright dispute. And so I downloaded the file to my computer in an attempt to read and respond to the report that they had sent me. But what you end up downloading is not a PDF file as was indicated, by the Google Drive link. Instead, what you end up getting is a compressed RAR file containing a lesser known file type known as an SCR file. So again, in the moment, I'm acting quickly, I'm a little bit aggravated, a little bit stressed out for having to deal with this potential copyright claim on my account, and I'm not exactly thinking clearly or understanding what exactly I'm doing. So I end up unzipping the folder and double clicking on the SCR file, expecting it to pull up some sort of PDF or image or Word document expressing this report that was supposedly sent to me. And after I clicked on it, nothing visually happened on my computer screen. I figured that I misclicked, so I double-clicked on it again, 
and once again nothing happened. And it was at that point where I started to have a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach that I'd made a great mistake. I had just downloaded and clicked on this file from Dubious Origins, which was a file type that I didn't even know. So what actually is an SCR file? Well, it turns out it's sort of this old vestigial file type from older versions of Windows and older days of home computing back when people used screensavers. Now, some of the younger people watching this video might not even know what a screensaver is. It's sort of a relic of a bygone time when we used computers a little differently. But basically, 20 or so years ago, back when people used Windows XP or whatever, it was a common thing to have your computer go to sleep and let the display play this sort of ambient slideshow or animation or custom image of whatever you wanted. And it was referred to as a screensaver. And so, to load up the screensaver on Windows, they had this file type called a .scr file. And while this file type was only intended to be used with screensaver technology, it ended up being discovered that you could use the .scr file to load an executable file. Meaning that the unassuming .scr file could basically be used as a trojan to load up whatever virus or malware you wanted on it. So basically, you could use the .scr file to disguise malware. And I think in the modern day, most savvy computer users know to look out for EXE and DLL files. But man, this SCR file type exploit, it slipped by the wayside. I didn't know what it was, so I figured it was just innocuous. But as I would soon learn with a quick Google search online, it clearly wasn't. It's basically this obsolete framework that's used primarily nowadays just to distribute malware. And that's exactly what just happened to me. And so all of a sudden, at this point, I'm now in damage control mode. I don't see anything visually wrong with my computer in the moment, but I know with high confidence that I've just infected it with a virus that's going to be doing whatever it wants. So once I truly realize what's just happened, I unplug my computer from the internet and just stop and try to think of what to do next. I run a scan on Malwarebytes and Windows Defender and neither of them come up with anything, but I'm convinced at this point that the virus has infected my computer and it's just found a way to hide from being detected. So at this point, I'm just too paranoid. I can't in good conscience go on using this computer in its current state when there's a very high chance that it's infected with some kind of spyware that's going to be stealing my personal information. And so I basically decided to do the safe option of just clean reinstalling Windows. I rebooted the computer in safe mode and backed up all my files and then just overwrote the previous system with a clean install of a fresh version of Windows from a USB. I then had to eat the time loss of going through the hassle of reinstalling all my programs and going on all my crucial accounts online and changing the passwords. But now that several days have passed, my accounts seem to be stable and secure. So it seems like for the time being, despite my idiotic mistake, the crisis was averted. So now that I had pretty much saved my own skin, my focus shifted to warning people that the scam exists to make sure that they don't fall prey to the same circumstances. And so I looked online to see if other YouTubers had been dealing with a similar problem, and I ended up finding this video by a cybersecurity YouTuber by the name of John Hammond that I'll link below, where he recounted his own experience from a few months ago when an identical message to the one I got got sent to his Google Drive. And being a computer expert, John actually went in and investigated what the malware actually does when it infects your machine. You can watch the video below for more details, but basically, through his research, he reaches the conclusion that this malware being spread to YouTubers seems to match the description of this spyware known as Redline that's being distributed for sale on the dark web. And what the spyware attempts to do once it infects your computer is go through all your personal files and web browsers and cookies and passwords and uses your internet connection to send your crucial information to whoever is in charge of the scam. I think it's very probable that the purpose of the scam is to try to steal your YouTube login information and to basically hijack your account and use it as a means to upload one of these live streams for a crypto scam or whatever these people are doing at the moment. Over the past couple years in particular, I've seen a lot of cases where a YouTuber has had their account taken over to be basically used as this surrogate to pump out a bunch of live streams that are basically scamming the existing audience of the account. And I have a strong suspicion that the scam that ended up tricking me was no different. 
I've also heard other scams in a similar nature where fake sponsorships will attempt to email an up-and-coming creator and convince them to open a file containing the terms of the sponsorship agreement, which is basically just the same virus that I've been discussing this whole time. So it's bad enough already that YouTubers have to deal with so many threats from YouTube itself, and now there's this whole additional threat we have to deal with of hackers trying to break into your account. It's these wages, man. They know that we as YouTubers got it good, and they want a little taste. They want it so bad that they're willing to do whatever it takes to steal it from us. But hey, keep your eyes peeled, stay on your toes, and don't download suspicious unknown files from unknown places. And as long as you do that, your YouTube account should live to see another day.